Hey yeah, guys, my name is Priscilla Elias and today I'll tell you how to become a professional photographer in seven steps. Things I actually did when I started out about four years ago that really helped me to start out, put my name out in the market and start shooting professionally in no time. Intro! <laughs> Most of us photographers start out as amateurs. We start taking photos of things and people we love, we want to take nice travel photos and many times we end up falling so hard for it that we do not want it only as a hobby but we also want to do it for a living. But many times it is scary going from amateur to professional photography. We start wondering if it is time, if we're good enough, if we would be able to actually make a living out of it. Yeah, I get it. I have been there. For that reason, I decided to share the seven steps I took when I decided to become a professional photographer, because maybe these tips will help you to also have the guts to do what you gotta do in order to make your dream of becoming a professional photographer come true. I will consider that by the time you're thinking about becoming a professional photographer, you already have at least an entry-level photo equipment that will allow you to take decent professional photos. So that will not be one of the steps you will hear me talk about today. Without further ado, let's do this. Tip number one, develop and practice your skills until you're good enough to charge for your work. And if you're like me, the first thing that will come to your mind now is the same thing that worried me in the beginning. When do I know I'm good enough to charge for my work? The first question you've got to ask yourself is, have I practiced enough? Look at the photos you have. For the type of photos you want to do, have you taken enough photos? Do you feel comfortable with your equipment and do you know how to use your camera settings accordingly to get the best out of it for the kind of photography you want to shoot? If not, first things first go shoot more. Grab a friend that likes to be photographed or that looks good on camera and offer them a free photo session. Tell them you're practicing and hear some feedback. If you do not want to shoot people, then grab whatever it is that you want to shoot and practice. If you still feel like you're not doing a good job, search for some specific videos on YouTube that could help you to improve the specific skills you feel that you need to improve. Then if you've done this, what I suggest you do is what I did when I was thinking of becoming a professional photographer. Compare your work to photographers from your city that you admire or who are out there taking photos professionally. Are you as good as some of them? How much are the ones who you consider to be as good as you charging for their work? Make this research. It will help you both to understand if you need to get better to start charging and also to have an idea of how much you can charge for your photography. And of course that comparing your work and price is not something you want to do in the long run, but it is always good to know the market in your region so you won't be way below or above average, especially when starting out. Tip number two, create your portfolio. And this is something that you might have already done if you practiced enough by now. But if not, this is essential. And even if you did practice a lot, maybe you did practice with general photos, but you do not have enough photos to showcase the specific type of photography you want to start with. If that's your case, work on creating your portfolio. It is what will sell your work. Again, if you want to shoot portraits, Offer a free photo shoot to a friend and family. If you want to shoot weddings, offer to second shoot a couple of weddings for free for a wedding photographer from your city. If you're shooting products, get a couple of products like the ones you intend to shoot and prepare the shots. Whatever it is that you want to shoot professionally, if you want to charge for it, you need to be able to show your clients what they can expect from you. So get this going as quick as possible. Tip number three, 
create your brand. And maybe you've already started doing this when you created your portfolio. What are you going to shoot? This is the first big question when it comes to defining your brand. What is your brand and business going to be called? How do you want people to remember you? You want to be thought of as a portrait photographer, as a urban photographer, as a minimalist photographer, a product photographer, all of the above. Whatever it is, what I suggest is write it down and see if your portfolio represents the brand you want to create. And hey, don't get crazy about this at first. A brand many times is not something that will be built overnight, especially if you're starting out in photography. You might start shooting portraits and after a couple of months you might realize you also like to shoot products or you might realize you want to shoot both portraits and products. Or maybe you find out you want to focus on a specific public. I don't know, newborn, maternity, influencers, music, whatever. If you know this from the start, perfect. You're way beyond most people are at the stage they consider being professional photographers. But if you're like me and most of us, you will not be exactly sure what your brand will be in the end. But you need to start with something. So decide what you're starting out with and position yourself as such when you talk about your work, even if you change it later. Tip number four, create your social media accounts and website, or in other words, build your online presence. After you have photography skills, you have a portfolio and you have an idea for your brand, it is time to create and feed your social media. An online presence is essential nowadays as most people will find out about you searching for you on the internet or accidentally going through your work on social media. So work on this. A website might also be a good idea. It will not only allow you to gather all of your best work together in a very consumable way, but it will also give you more credibility and real reliability and reliability as a photographer. It certainly makes you look more professional. Tip number five, spread the word. Now that you have your social media accounts created and maybe even your website running, it's time to spread the word. Post some beautiful photos and invite your friends and contacts to your social media accounts. Consider offering a limited number of sessions for a special prize on your Instagram and in Facebook groups related to the type of activity your possible clients enjoy. Or even some different random Facebook groups from your town and your own Facebook profile. Keep updating your social media with interesting, beautiful content and talk about what you're offering. Use tags on Instagram that will help you to be found by your audience. Consider putting out some business cards to places where you think your possible clients will be. It might take some time for this to get going, but if you keep consistent, you will see that in no time you will be making some profit from your photography. And if you want more tips on how to get your first paid clients, by the way, I have an entire video where I talk specifically about that, for which I will leave a link up here and in the description also. So don't forget to check it out after you watch this video. Tip number six, consider opening up your own company. Now that you've spread the word, you'll probably have some clients on the watch and soon enough you will have people contacting you to shoot some sessions. At the point I opened up my own photography company, I had already had some paid clients. I didn't want to open my company before knowing that I would actually have people reaching me to book sessions. So if that's also your case, and I strongly suggest you do that, especially if it costs money to start your company where you live, you can do the same I did when I started out. I use a service called Cool Company. They printed my invoices for me and even though in the end I paid a bit extra for these invoices, it was still worth it for me as I didn't have to have an accountant or didn't have to worry about all of the paperwork and bureaucracy that having a company usually involves. Now, Cool Company is only available in UK, Sweden and Norway, so if you're not from one of these countries, I suggest you look for a service that provides invoices for freelancers on Google. 
I'm sure you'll find a good one in your country. Another solution for your invoices when you still don't have your own company running is asking a photographer or videographer who is your friend if they could print your invoices using their company. You also might end up having to pay a little extra for them to do this for you, but it's a way out to get it started. And my last tip is act professionally. And this is the last one, but it has some subtopics, so let's go. This might sound obvious, but the fact is, in reality, I've seen many professionals not being very professional. And you've probably seen that too. It's pretty common. So here are some subtopics I will name that you might want to keep in mind in order to act professionally. So one, be respectful. Being respectful to everybody who contacts you is very important for any professional and it's no different for photography don't use harsh words and respect people's opinions and questions another way to be respectful to your clients is following the next things i will mention here so one be on time be on time with your meetings with your session and with the delivery of your photos don't promise anything you cannot deliver, people will find you respectful and much more professional if you respect their time and your promises. Be attentive. Listen to your client's needs. Don't run in auto mode. Each person and client has their own needs, insecurities, doubts and might demand a different posture from you. Also, don't take forever to answer their messages. Try to get back to them as soon as possible. There are tons of photographers out there and if you show them you are as interested as they are on this photo shoot, the chances you get the job are much bigger. Be clear and explain the details. Don't be vague or try to fool your clients into unsaid details. Try to be as specific and detailed as possible about what they should expect from your work. What are the packages you were offering? How many photos will you deliver? Will you deliver edited or unedited photos? What type of editing will you do? Do you deliver HD or low res photos? Will they be able to choose the photos they like? And if so, how will they be able to choose them? How will they receive the photos? When will you deliver the images? What if they want extra photos? How much will it cost them? Think about all of the details and try to include all of that when you send out your quote. That way your client knows exactly what to expect from you and you will avoid two things. Getting them upset and also getting yourself upset. Then another important topic is be a problem solver. Present solutions if the packages you had to offer did not seem to be what your client needs. They might need more photos with basic editing or less photos with detailed editing. They might need help with choosing the location, models, or even with posing. Be flexible to try to actually solve your client's problem. The same goes for the date of the shoot. If it rains and if it is an outdoor photo session, will your client have the option to change the date? Make it possible. Maybe your client feels insecure or need help with fixing their clothes, finding the right posing or background. Find solutions to whatever problem can make your client not feel comfortable enough to be able to give their best for the shoot. This will not only make you look more professional, but will also result in a happy client in the end. And finally, have a contract. You might have gone through it all with your client when you sent out your quote, but if you booked a session with him, make a contract that will protect both sides. That way your client will feel safe knowing what to expect from you and you will also be safe knowing your client knows what you're doing in detail. That way, whatever happens, you have it in hand to remember what was agreed between the two of you. And there are many things regarding your professional protection that should be in this contract, but I won't go further into 
this on this video because I have a video where I talk about that in detail for which I'll leave a link up here and in the description. If you watch that video you will also find a link to the photography contract I use so you can also use it as an inspiration for you to create yours according to your specific needs in case you want to. That is all for today. If this video helped you guys, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. You will help me tons in return. I hope this was helpful to some of you. I hope to see you back around here soon and I guess I will see you in the next video. Ciao!